Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to another tutorial on how to create water effects using After Effects and Flash. So what we've got here is very, very similar to this animation we looked at last time. But this one is a bit more advanced because it's got a couple of instances of wave warp on it. And I'd say it looks a little bit more like a waterfall. So this would be ideal for importing into Flash and creating a really nice waterfall, adding some extra shadows and stuff and some foam. So let's take a look at how I've done it. Again, I've got this pre-comp. I'm going to call that pre-comp wave warp, like so. Then we can double click on it to check out what's inside. So again, we've got two shape layers. Let's take a look at them. The first one we've got is this blue one. It doesn't have any effects on it. All it is is a straight line on a shape layer. So it's just a stroke of 182 pixels and it's blue. That's it, really nice and simple. The second layer, the white one, which I'm gonna rename now, is exactly the same, except it's a thinner stroke of 12 pixels and it's white. So again, we've got this sawtooth wave running through it. The wave height is 93, the wave width is 86, and the direction is minus 199. The wave speed is one. There's no pinning and no phase. And I've left the quality on low. So we get this really simple lines moving through a thicker blue line. So that's all that's going on inside that pre-comp. So, so let's check it out in the main composition here. And you can see it's looking a lot more kind of flowing and interesting. These boring straight lines have been changed into these much more interesting wobbly lines that kind of taper. They're not the same width all the way through. Great stuff. Let's check out how I've done that. What we've got is two wave warp effects. The first one, let's just turn off this one, is a sine wave. It's got a height of 14 and a width of 64. So we could mess about with that if we wanted. The direction is 132. That's just what I chose. It's what I thought looked best. The wave speed is one and the pinning is none. And the phase is zero. And we've set posterize time to eight. So it's gonna run at eight frames a second. So there you go, that's the kind of basic one. But that's sitting on top of this smooth noise effect. So we just have a look at that by itself. This is just the smooth noise on its own. What that's doing is it's changing these boring lines into wobbly, slightly more tapered ones. So the wave type is smooth noise. The wave height is minus 43. The wave width is 149. The direction is this crazy value of one times one, two, one. That's just because I messed around with it until it looked way that I wanted. The wave speed is one, the pinning is none, and there's no phase, and it's a relatively low quality. So if we turn them both on, we get this really interesting kind of waterfall sort of effect. So the next thing we need to do is figure out where the loop is. I think it's probably just before one second. Let's try that out. You can see at one second, it looks the same as it does at the beginning. When you've got a wave warp speed of one, that's generally where the loop's gonna be, one frame before one second. Because if we left it at one second, we'd get two lots of this initial frame, which would make our animation sort of stagger. We don't want this frame to appear for too long. So that's why we go one frame before and choose that. So there you go, that's a kind of waterfall effect using After Effects, and you could import that into Flash by adding to the render queue, either using the media encoder for CC or the render queue for CS6 and below, rendering it out as PNG sequence at 25 frames a second, and then in Flash, using the trace bitmap function to make this into vectors, or you could draw over it using 
your Wacom tablet or other type of tablet in a new layer. If you don't know how to do any of the stuff I just said, make sure you check out my introduction to wave warp tutorial. So that's how to make a waterfall. Have a go yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Coloring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.